Hey, you probably didn't expect this coming. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another Andrew Ambrose video. And, of course, it's me, your boy, Andrew Ambrose. And today, I've decided to finally bring back an old series that I used to do back on my previous channel before it got taken down due to false copyright claims. And, uh, ironically, that series was what the copyright claims were for, but I've decided to bring it back here on my current channel with some flavor. And well, that series was called Andrew Plays, and well, it was a series I made back around 2015. And basically it was just it was like it was pretty much a let's play series. Not not like this. Ba basically I would just in in each episode I'd just introduce a game, talk about it for a few for about a minute. And then just pop it in and just play it. And this was before I did any sort of major editing, so I didn't really. So it, it was very rudimentary, very basic. But years have passed. It's been it's been more than it's been more than four years since that tragic day. It's it's been more than four day, years since that tragic day back in 2016 when my channel was taken down for false copyright claims and. Now we're here, and well, I'm bigger than ever. So I thought I'd bring this old thing back, but in the, in the style more akin to uh, traditional Let's Plays, where you see me here in the top left, and you also see the game. And well, and well, I'm just, this is basically, I'm doing this mainly because I just, I love video games so much, and I love talking about them, and I just thought I'd make videos of just me playing games. And talking about them for you guys, some so you so you guys get to watch something for the week. And well, uh, like I love talking about games. I even have my own review show. But sometimes I just wanna just play the game and talk about it. So this basically gives you guys a little something to do, something to watch whenever I can't get out a video for the week. But enough rambling. Um, but you're probably thinking, Andrew, what kind of games are you going to play in these Let's Play videos? Or Andrew Plays videos? Well, mo most people who do Let's Plays or stream games on Twitch, they usually play popular games like Minecraft, Fortnite, y you know, the basic stuff. Or even with retro game YouTubers, they usually play games that are very, very well known, like Super Mario World. Or like, I don't know, Donkey Kong Country. You know, stuff that we all hear about all the time. But I've decided to mix it up for my show. And instead, focus more on games that are more obscure, but still pretty awesome. Or at the very least, not many people have heard of. Or maybe never heard of before. Until, well, now. And well, for my first Andrew Plays videos since 2016... I've decided to take a look at one of my favorite underrated games of all time, Mario Brothers Special for the Sharp X1. Now, you're probably looking at this confused, like, what the hell is this? What the hell is this, Andrew? Please explain this to me. Fear not, I will explain. Basically, in 1984, um, there was Nintendo, big video game company. They had recently launched their Famicom system in Japan. Or family computer, rather. And well, and then there was uh, Hudson Soft, or just Hudson, uh, a computer game programmer. Um, and well, Hudson saw the family computer and saw how successful it was being. So, and they wanted to develop games for it as well as the computers. So they got together with Nintendo and they basically created a partnership with them. Um, Nintendo was setting up a third license, a third party licensing program that would allow other companies to officially make games for the family computer um, under license from Nintendo. And well, Hudson was the very first to join the, the list of third party developers for fam family computer games and, of course, NES games. Or rather, just, well, family computer, but y you know what I mean. And in return, Nintendo actually gave the um, exclusive rights to Hudson to produce uh, PC games based off of Nintendo games. 
And well, that's exactly what Hudson did from 1984 to 1986. Um, some of the games that some of the game some of the uh, Nintendo games that they made for the computers, some of them were simply ports of pre-existing Famicom games made for I guess I guess they were just made for people who couldn't afford a Famicom and could only afford to have a computer so they could play these games too on their computer. Of course, these computers weren't as advanced as the Famicom, so these computer ports weren't as advanced, but they were still pretty neat. And of course, there are games like Mario Brothers Special here, where Hudson, instead of just straight up porting a game like Mario Brothers to the PC, they instead decided to make a brand new game based off of pre-existing elements from the older games like Mario Brothers, and yeah, they just made something new from made something new from what already existed, and that's how we got stuff like Mario Brothers Special and also Super Mario Brothers Special, which I'm pretty sure you, most of you might have already heard about. Kilgruz did a did a phen phenomenal video about Super Mario Brothers Special um, not too long ago. I don't know, I remember exactly when he posted it, but it was fairly recently. You should definitely check that out if you get the chance. But anyways, we're, we're, we're playing Mario Brothers Special here, and well, I'm emulating this on my computer, and, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be playing the game using my NES controller hooked up with a special adapter that hooks it into the USB port on my computer so I can use it to play games, and it, I've had it for a while, and it's actually very, very cool, so... Yeah, we're using this, and well, honestly, what better way to play a game based on a Nintendo Classic than with a Nintendo controller? Now, let me just make sure that I have the settings uh, for this thing all set to go, because... Right. Yeah, there we go. All the settings are good for that, so... Without further ado, let's begin the game. Alright, so, unlike the original Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers Special actually has multiple different levels with different objectives in them. Unlike the original game where you're just trying to clear out all the enemies, in this game you're trying to reach the exit of the level by performing a certain task. In the first level here, um, there are these uh, different uh, platforms with openings in them and that Mario has to jump through each of them to reach the top and then once he reaches the top he has to um, flick all these switches and, and uh, he has to open up the switches so that he can open up any one of the exits on the side and then run through them and yeah Second phase, or second stage rather, involves Mario in a room full of uh, uh, trampolines. Well, I don't know trampoline, or actually no. Uh, oh yeah, uh, wires, or I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what they're supposed to be, but basically these things, when you land on them, they shake. So what you're supposed to do, to, since you can't bump the turtles from underneath like in the original because the platforms don't respond don't budge when you hit them from underneath you instead have to uh jump on this wire to make it shake in order to stun them and then knock them off the screen oh you got to be you got to watch out for the fireballs just like in the original and speaking of which um oh yeah you, you got to get two turtles or shell creepers, rather, and then reach that platform. Alright, phase number three. In this one, you got these conveyor belts and those dollar signs, and there's this platform here. It's kind of annoying to get through, but you just gotta bear with it. Basically, you gotta get up there. You just gotta get up there. Is, oh crap. You gotta get up there and collect all the dollar signs. Once you collect all the dollar signs, uh, I think a ring shows up at the... 
Oh, I got a game over. Don't worry, I'll, I'm gonna try it again. Alright, back here with phase one. So, like... With this game, there are actually multiple different versions, because there were a bunch of Japanese PCs that Hudson developed for in the 80s. Like, the two main PCs that got these n special Nintendo games were the Sharp X1, which is the version shown here, and the NEC PC8801 version, which was pretty much all the PC80... And, like, the NEC PC88 is very inferior to the Sharp X1. The graphics aren't as good, and the games don't run as, well, smoothly as the Sharp X1. Like, the Sharp X1 is actually one of my favorite uh, microcomputers from the 80s. It's, it's like, it was, I think it was released by Sharp in 1982. Um, I th it's, it's not on par with, like, the MSX, which is, like, one of my also one of my favorite microcomputers from the 80s when it comes to the, to games but it, it it's not right up there with MSX but it comes pretty damn close to being very close and the X1 had a lot of great games of course including this one and well and it lasted for quite a while from what from I th at least I think it did, because there are a lot of games for it, a lot of awesome ones, like this one. Now, so anyways, like I was saying before, you gotta collect these dollar signs, and once you collect enough of the dollar signs, um, ah, there we go, once you collect all the dollar signs, there will be a ring that appears at the top, you just gotta get on this thing, and then you go up and you collect it, if I can properly get there. There! Aw, oh, crap. There we go! And now the bonus stage, which you just collect the dollar signs. Similar to the bonus stages in the original Mario Brothers, but a lot more simpler and a lot easier to do. Just get all the dollar signs as fast as you can, then get the ring. And I have to say, in this game, the music is fantastic. Well, at least in the Sharp X1 version, as well as the, uh... The MZ2200 port. I think that's what it is. Like, that version is also fantastic. Like, in both this and the MZ2200 version, the music is absolutely fantastic, and so are the graphics. But if you're playing this on, like... If you're playing this on, like, the NEC PC-88, or something, then the music is just gonna be beeps, like an old MS-DOS game with the PC speaker on, and it's just gonna sound like total ass. So, if you're gonna play this game, for the best graphics, gameplay, and sound, you're gonna need the either the MZ2200 version, or here, the MSX, I mean, no, fuck, not the MSX, the Sharp X1 version. And speaking of the MSX, it's, I, I find it kind of weird that Hudson never bothered porting the, uh, uh, is, they never bothered porting any of these, never bothered making any MSX ports of these Nintendo games that they made, because the MSX was one of the few computers that Hudson programmed games for. As a, lot, as a matter of fact, a lot of Hudson's famous game, most famous titles, got their start on the MSX, or at least had a version for the MSX. Possibly the biggest example being Bomberman, which was originally an MSX title released back in 1983. One of the very first games for the MSX, uh, standard. So, I'm surprised that they never even bothered making, attempting, at least attempting to do some, to do one of the, to at least port at least one of these games to the MSX, because it would have probably turned out amazing, considering the power of the MSX, just the MSX-1 even, the power of that compared to all these other Japanese PCs from the, do from the days of old, it would have been freaking sweet, but unfortunately we didn't get that, 
Although, if anyone out there is good with an good how with uh, progr MSX programming, you gotta you you really should consider bringing this game to MSX and and all the other Hudson uh, Nintendo games for PCs because they're they're pretty awesome, especially this one. And uh, and not only that, but also. If you're good with NES programming, you should really try, like, porting this game to NES via homebrew. Like, taking the original Famicom or, Fam or NES Mario Brothers, but hacking it, like, completely reverse engineering it to be this. That would be literally the greatest thing in the world. Well, not literally, but it would be pretty freaking sweet because this game is actually really cool, and I can imagine it being even better running in an actual... The actual uh, Mario Brothers, the NES Mario Brothers, or Famicom Mario Brothers engine, since, well, it's very close, it's pretty close to the arcade and it works so well, so. NES, I mean, Famicom homebrew artists out there, if you're looking for stuff to port, could definitely consider this one. Like, like Super Mario Brothers special, someone uh, actually hacked the original Super Mario Brothers. But to have all of the level designs from Mario Brothers Special, and, a, and well, someone already did that like a while ago, and well, it's alright, but like, it's not completely accurate because there are some items in Mario Brothers Special, the original version, I mean, Super Mario Brothers Special. Super Mario Brothers Special, the original uh, game on the PCs, there were some items in that that weren't anywhere to be found on the, the, this, any, like, um, god damn it, I'm stuttering, why am I stuttering, I sound like a jackass, um, so anyway, in the, the original Super Mario Brothers, you know, NES, Ni Famicom 1985, classic game, when Hudson makes Super Mario Brothers special for PC, in, uh, uh, sorry, that was my phone, but like, Hudson makes Super Mario Brothers special in uh, 1986. Um, they added in some new items that are references to uh, stuff from other Mario games, like the ham. They added in the hammer from Donkey Kong, and while these items aren't prominently featured in the game, they're still there. But so, and unfortunately, since um, the person who made the uh, NES hack of Super Mario Brothers special, they couldn't. They they unfortunately w couldn't add everything from the original game, like the items, but maybe someday someone will go in and actually add the items so that we'll have a truly accurate experience because, it, you know, it just it just adds to it, you know? It just adds to the overall charm of S Super Mario Brothers Special. Ah, oh, crap. Well, I guess I'll... I think I've done enough of that, but that, that was pretty fun, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video that I made, and hopefully I'll be able to do more of these in the future, looking at more obscure games, like for old Japanese PCs like the Sharp X1, and yeah, hopefully stuff will happen and things will get better, and you'll enjoy these, and yeah, so uh, thank you for watching, my name is Andrew Ambrose, and as always you guys, I'll catch you later.